We know life can be messy, and that's why you need a plan. Here at the Lifestyle Group, we want to meet you where you are in life and help you create the best home remodeling plan for your lifestyle. To us, plan is more than just a word. It's an acronym we live by for our clients. To always be prepared, to lead you through the process, to adapt to what you need, and to make sure there are no surprises. Each month on the Do You Plan podcast, we'll look into home remodeling projects that have inspired us, taught us, or can teach you for your future home remodel. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Do You Plan podcast. This will be the first of its kind in that since we have the video element now to this process, uh, this will be the first time that I've actually done a solo podcast with video, just me and the camera and my cameraman, Wes. Thanks, Wes. You will be my audience visually. And to those of you listening today, you'll be my audience uh, from an audio perspective. So for this episode, what I want to do is I wanted to pivot and maybe take a step back. In recent episodes, I've spent time talking to business leaders and having really interesting discussions. Uh, I did a a great podcast with Gary Nance, a premier architect here in the central Indiana area, um, who actually is actually internationally known, but primarily nationally uh, known for the work that he does. And then I have also recently done a podcast with Dana Friedman, who is the owner of Petite G. It's a jewelry company um, down around 52nd in Illinois that I really like the model of her business. And if you haven't taken a look at that, it would be an interesting one to kind of check out and and just listen to a conversation about number one. It's very to me, it's very interesting how a jewelry a jewelry business is run and the decisions that she makes day to day. But also from a business owner to business owner perspective, just kind of getting a sense of how she approaches her industry. And then most recently, uh, I did a podcast with uh, a couple of people that I have a great deal of respect for, Heather Haas from Advisa and King Lumpkin, who's the chief acquisition officer at Prolific. And we talked a lot about leadership and culture and uh, just leading people and organizations in these changing times and talking about personality profiles and how those affect business and how they affect decision making. So I, I've done a lot of maybe more remote interviews visually uh, where I go to people's places of business and I talk to them about their businesses and things that I found interesting to me. Today, I want to take a step back and kind of step back into the remodeling world. The uh, The name of this podcast is the Do You Plan podcast. And Part of that acronym of planning is helping to prepare people for remodeling projects and leading them through the decision making processes that they would uh, run into as they were considering a project. And then also the ability to kind of adapt to changing circumstances, which we've had many of those in our economy in the last several months. And finally, trying to put you in a position where there are no surprises as you go into a project. So I'm taking our our plan acronym and I'm pivoting and going to talk about it from the perspective of a homeowner who's considering a project now and really just trying to decide, should I do a remodeling project now? If I am, what does it look like? Am I spending more? Am I spending too much? Should I wait? All of those decisions that are going to come into play for you as a homeowner considering a project. Obviously, the size of your project can have an impact on whether or not timing is right. The smaller your project, probably the less impact that the economy is going to have on whether or not you do it now versus later. And the larger the project, you might think that it's going to have a larger role, but it really, in my mind, depends on the mix of products and the decisions that you're making within that project. And I'll get into that um, as I as I talk to you here a little bit today. I think what I want to make sure that people understand, there's a lot of confusing things going on out there with lumber cost and product cost and inflation and interest rates and all of these things that would impact decisions that you would make. I want to I want to clarify how I see those things impacting our world, which I think will then help you as a homeowner make decisions about whether or not the timing is right for your project. So. To start the conversation briefly, I want to kind of take a step back and I want to talk about what the world has been like for us since COVID, because I think COVID created an environment 
that has led us to where we are today. And I want to I want to walk you through that briefly. The first thing that happened when COVID hit for real in March of uh, 2020 is everything stopped. And when everything stopped, I can remember sitting in my conference room at my office. I drove down an empty interstate to get there. I sat there by myself and I was trying to contemplate, okay, where are we going to go from here? And it was all about just understanding what the environment was going to be like, what were we going to be able to do, what we're not going to be able to do, and trying to create a path for what the next several months were going to look like without really an understanding of what it was, what the future really was going to hold. One of the things we quickly came to is that we could do outside projects and we could do projects in homes where people weren't living there. And so in that scenario, that's exactly what we did. If we were working in the home of a somebody, of a family, um, I, I distinctly remember having an older couple that we were doing an accessible shower for, and we just hit the pause button. We put everything on hold actually for many months, many months. And we stepped away from that project and said, we'll circle back when everything settles down, when you as a homeowner are comfortable, when we know it's safe to come in the house and we'll do that. And we focused on outside projects. And fortunately, we had some of those to focus on. Uh, very early, though, I think something took hold, which is people sat in their homes. They weren't going to work. They weren't they weren't doing a lot of anything in many cases. They were looking at their four walls and they were deciding they didn't like them very much. They were bored. They had some disposable income because they weren't going on vacation. They weren't going out to eat. They weren't doing the typical things. And they were looking around going, we've got to do something with this place. So that very quickly changed our world from an environment where we didn't know what was going to happen to it got very crazy very quickly. The other thing that happened, though, in that scenario was that the homeowner who wanted a deck was going to Home Depot or Lowe's or Menards and they were buying the lumber to build a deck. And then when we would go need lumber, there wasn't lumber there because <laughs> the neighbor had bought the lumber and our you know, all the do-it-yourselfers that bought the lumber. So next thing you know, you can't find four by four post. Then at some point you can't get paint at a paint store because the paint store can't get the supplies to make the paint. Drywall's not available. Pieces and parts for windows and doors aren't available. And so lead times began to grow as labor issues impacted the suppliers, as supply chain issues impacted the suppliers, and lead times just kept growing and growing and growing. So we got to a place where I think we still sit today, which is that you as a homeowner have to understand that if you engage in a project now, you're really not engaging in a project for now. You're engaging in a project for five to six months from now. And so you have to speed up your thinking timeline because in my mind, what you're really doing is you're getting in line right now. You're ordering your products. You're getting on somebody's schedule. You're letting all of those things that are happening very slowly come together so that eventually everything's going to arrive and we're going to be able to come to your home and we're going to be able to do the project for you that you wanted. But when cabinets have a lead time of four to five months and when windows have a lead time of four to five months or five to six months, and when we sometimes we waited 11 months for a screen for a door, um, there are some appliances for people that have specific ones for their kitchen. There's some appliances that are pushing a year lead time. You have a scenario where you don't necessarily get the benefit of knowing that what you would normally pick in, in a normal traditional selection setting, if it's going to be available, we've been waiting on a tub for a client for several months. We've been waiting on shower glass trim for multiple months for a project, um, just things that you wouldn't think are normal. And I, I mean, in this, in the spirit of just off the wall, things that we run into, there's a, a particular type of sink. It's a cast iron sink and it's a popular one. It's a little bit more expensive, but it, but it's nice. And clients that want cast iron sinks are having trouble getting them because the cast iron sinks come from the Ukraine and there aren't cast iron sinks coming out of the Ukraine these days. So we aren't having availability of cast iron sinks. So now we're pivoting to other products. When those pivots take place to other products or competitors, 
you can imagine what's happening to their lead times. Now they've got more um, more backlog and more interest in their product, and so they're having to try to ramp up production. It the world is the world is crazy that way. It doesn't mean we're not doing projects or, or that you can't get things done. It just means you have to be more patient. You're going to have to understand that things are taking longer, and they're really literally not even in our control. So. As, as I revert back to my conversation about the supply chain growing, you know, those things that happen with all of the activity that picked up while we were in a tight labor market and people were, um, were still staying home or working from home, the, the lead times grew. And as the lead times grew, they, they haven't come back. And there have been shortages in literally just about every product category. They tend to, it feels like they migrate around um, from one product option to another. And once it feels like we get on top of one thing, then another thing has a longer lead time. But now we have the environment of rising interest rates. And this isn't political conversation. This is just factual conversation. As, As the rates are being driven up, they are trying to slow the market. And as they try to slow the market, the impact to us eventually will, it will trickle down that our opportunities will slow at some point someday, but we haven't seen that yet. And I think what's happening, as I've described to some of my um, custom builder peers in my world is we've gone from like white, hot, crazy to still very, very good. And it's slowed a little bit, but I know on the new construction site, it's starting to slow, at least in the production market, it's starting to slow a little bit more. It's starting to have an impact. They're pulling back on their projections of how many project, how many homes they're going to build and things like that. It'll take a little bit, a little time for it to trickle to us. But once these things start to slow down, I think what's going to happen is the backlogs for the product are going to condense and we're going to get things probably a little bit more quickly than we're accustomed to because we won't be waiting for the five to six months to be able to get it. It does not mean it's going to get cheaper. I do not think it's going to get cheaper because that's the other piece that plays into this, which is if you're as a, you're a homeowner and you're sitting there trying to decide, do I do my project now or do I wait until it gets less expen- becomes less expensive? I don't think it's going to become less expensive. I've been doing this 23 years. And I've never seen the project cost drop. I mean, I think back in an environment where um, when gas prices went up and we had the first kind of financial crisis in the 2008, 2010 timeframe and and things started to to change for the negative, we got freight surcharges, we got gas, we got fuel surcharges. When gas cost went down a handful of years ago, did they ever come back and pull those surcharges off and say, you know what, we don't need those anymore? No, they never did. And But when fuel cost went up, as they've gone up recently, did they increase the fuel surcharges again? Absolutely. Freight charges have gone through the roof, but there's a, there's a good reason downstream for that. Um, I don't know if it's a good reason, but there's, a, there's an explanation for it, which is that the cost of a shipping container is four to five times now more expensive than it was a couple of years ago pre-COVID. And so if a company is shipping a whole container full of flooring from overseas and that shipping container that used to cost $4,000 is now $20,000 or more, they're passing that cost through. That cost is coming through to us and it's coming through to you as the homeowner or the end user. And that's happening on every product in every phase with everything that we touch. So really what we're talking about when we talk about project cost, when I tell you that I don't think projects are going to get less expensive, I say that because I don't think they're going to get less expensive. The challenge that you have is if you have a project that has a lot of lumber and and it's a primary piece, like let's say we're building a large, large deck, for instance, where lumber is the majority of that project. The reality is that lumber is a commodity item where prices will go up and they'll come back down and they'll go up and they'll come back down. And in the case of where we are as we're as we're recording this right now, I would say lumber prices are down from where they were, but they were 
utterly ridiculous with where they were. And they're still very highly inflated from where we're accustomed to them being. And so now instead of four times normal cost, maybe it's two times normal cost or whatever the exact number, the ratio is. The fact of the matter is it's still expensive. It's just not as expensive as it was. And that's a good thing. The the offset, what we, the conversation we were having with folks when lumber was extremely high was you still better do your project now because, or you better get in line for your project now because the cost of money is going to go up and the cost of, when the cost of borrowing is going up, you have a different decision because yeah, you might pay more for that lumber right now, but look at the cost of borrowing the money over the years that you'll, that you'll be using, borrowing and paying interest on it. That lumber, that increase in the cost of lumber is not near as expensive as the amount of interest you'll pay over many years on a loan to borrow to do your project. So with that in mind, I would very much say the same thing now, which is that cost of money is higher, lumber is down, but I wouldn't make a decision like if I just wait another three months or six months, labor co- or lumber cost might come down. I just don't think it's gonna come down enough to make a difference. And the other piece that's happening is even as lumber costs have come down, product price increases haven't stopped. And across the board, I mean, there are some phases where we've literally had five increases in the last year. And what happens is maybe they come in with a, the they were, they were bold for a while. It was like 7% increase or an 8% increase or a 4% increase or whatever. But then they come back with a 3%. But it's not just 3%. It's 3% on top of the previous 7 or 8%. And so it's it when somebody tells me at the moment that inflation, that um, CPI is 9.1%, and I'm looking at that going, that may be true in whatever metric you're using. But in my world, what I see, that's not true. It's higher than that. And if I go and where I spend my money, that's not true. It's higher than that. And so if you have a project in my in my estimation if you're trying to give consideration to do we do this project or not I think the first thing I would bring you back to is how long are you going to be in the house is this a project that you're doing to get you by for the next 2 or 3 years and then you're going to find your next home or is this your forever home or is this your 10 year home understand that piece first then from there take a step back and say, all right, are we prepared to make an investment that may be more than what we had originally anticipated making because we want to enjoy our time here and it's important to us? And if the answer to that is yes, I think you take the next step and you start to work through whether or not your project is viable. I, When I talk to any potential homeowner, I'm going to ask a series of questions every time. I'm going to ask, how long have you been in your home? How long do you plan on staying? And do you, if I gave you three buckets, tell me how you're thinking about this project. Bucket one would be, I'm thinking about it in a very basic, functional, not cheap, but I just want I just want a nice, basic, functional space or project done. The middle bucket is, I call it nice, not crazy. Maybe you're going to splurge on a few items, but it's not your forever home. So you're just trying to stay in the middle of the market. You're not trying to get crazy, but you want it to be nice. And it means you're probably going to be here more than two or three years. And you just want to, you just want it to be nicer. Um, And then the third bucket is I'm going to be here for a long time, or I've waited a long time to do this. I'm going to do it once. I'm going to do it right. And I might spend more. If I see something I like, I'm probably going to get it because I don't plan on going anywhere. And I really want to do this. If your, if your project for you, as you guys think through it is a bucket two or a bucket three project where you know that you're probably going to do it a little bit nicer and you're going to want to do it to stay. I don't think you take what's going on in the economy and let that affect your decision whether or not you're going to do a project. I do think once you get into making selections and decisions on a project and you see where costs come in, that you could make some conscious decisions to pull back on an item that's not as important or scale up on certain things just based on the value that they give you. I I always tell people, Everything, every decision that you make in a bathroom remodel or a kitchen remodel has a cost versus value attached to it. I just looked at a a beautiful project that we've priced and the client wants 
a hand-painted backsplash tile that is about $100 a square foot. Not a common thing, a very unique thing. That is a that to me is a splurge item. If she looks at that and sees and understands the cost associated with it and decides she still wants to do it, then by all means do it. And if she looks at it and goes, no, I really would rather do five other things and and get more for my money, I don't need to do that. Then she's going to have plenty of opportunity to save. And so when you get into the decision about whether or not to spend money on a particular item, I think those are just based on the value that they bring to you personally. But the general scope of what I'm seeing in projects uh, as I talk to clients would go something like this. A typical kitchen that might have a couple years ago been in the 50s is now probably in the 60s. A typical bathroom that might have been in the 40s is now probably in the 50s. And so I'm just taking everything and I'm and it's just kind of stepping up a level and I'm resetting expectations for people on what these what how I'm seeing the cost move so that they can make good decisions for their families and what's important to them. So at this point, as I share information about project costs with clients, my experience is that it's really not changing behavior much at the moment. That's not to say that it won't over time, but people I think are living in the world with an understanding that things are just inherently more expensive with whatever they do and wherever they go. I don't know what that will mean for us as we move forward as an industry, if we will if we will hit the brakes at some point as rates get higher or costs just get too high. My perception of what's going to happen is costs will continue to go up because they always do. And that it'll probably the the cost increases will slow as we move forward because they've been hit. We've been hit very heavily um, in the last year plus with cost increases. And I think now we'll see them, but it it might just be the the three percent or it might be instead of five cost increases in a year, it might be two and they might be smaller uh, incremental amounts. That's what I'm expecting to see going forward. I still think that at the end of the day, what you as a homeowner have to do is just decide if the project is right for you. On my side, as a remodeling um, partner, what I'm looking at is I'm looking at a process where I say, there's three criteria that I would look at to talk to somebody about a project. Number one, are you nice? Number two, are you reasonable? Which means you understand the time delays and kind of that we can talk you through what that process is. And um, number three, do you have a realistic understanding of what we think the budget would be? And if those th- if those three things fall in line, then it really doesn't matter if your project is small or it's large to us, and we don't care what you spend. We'll try to help you understand what it would cost, and we'll see if we're the right partner or not for you and your project. But those are the three criteria that I'm looking at. Then I think as the economy slows on our end, if we want to continue to stay busy and earn projects, we're just going to have to be really good partners. We're going to have to be great communicators and keep people informed as to what's going on. Um, What we're already for the last year, we've been ordering product pretty much as quickly as we can get our um, get our contract signed so that we can prevent getting caught by the next price increase. Because as a remodeler, I'm not going to come back to one of my clients and say, hey, by the way, your price just went up by X because your project didn't happen for six months. And I have a real life example literally today where my cost of my quartz countertops when I priced the project six months ago was for this particular project was $8,900. And then today I just approved a payment for $9,700. That's not a client fault. That's not the client's fault. That's a me issue. Now, there will be some contractors you need to understand that will just make everything allowance items and they'll say, you absorb the risk and you absorb the cost. My new construction uh, friends have had to do that with lumber. They've had to say lumber is now an allowance item and wherever that lumber is at the time that we build your house, you're paying the difference because they can't eat that. They were having enormous price increases. And how do you how do you price and manage that? Normally in our projects, the lumber is much smaller and the and so it's minimal to me. And it's just it'll be a cost of doing business item for me. But for others, it's not. 
what we're also doing then by placing orders right away is I'm putting more cost right out up front and I'm filling my warehouse full of stuff as as products come in and find their way to us. So I've got, you know, say a kitchen that we've sold that I'll get cabinets will eventually come in in five or six months. But before that, we're ordering the sink and the sink faucet and the disposal and they might come in in a month or two and we're waiting on backsplash tile because it's back ordered. But that's okay because we've got six months. And so we're, you know, we're managing the intake of all of these products. We just are benef- are we're fortunate enough to have a place where we can stage these things. And many companies are. Uh, with that said, I think if you find the right partner for you and you and you still go down the path of exploring what your project would cost, there is literally no harm in having conversations with people about, hey, I'm thinking about a project that looks like this. Can you give me an idea of what you think it might cost? That is a common activity that we do every day anyway. So if somebody calls us for a project and is interested in a project, we're not going to run right out to the house. We're not going to start measuring the next day. Um, We're going to set up a phone call and I'm going to have a conversation with you about Talk to me about your project. Tell me what you're thinking about doing. I'll ask you questions. I'll ask you some of the questions I've talked about in this in this podcast. And I'm going to try to put you into that range. And I'm probably going to say something to you like your project feels like it could be in the 50s or 60s. It's not in the 40s. Could be in the 70s. It's probably not in the 80s, but it feels like 50s or 60s to me. That's how I'm going to talk about it because I want you to have a very realistic understanding before you go through any, uh, jump through any hoops or before we jump through any hoops, quite honestly, of, of, I always call it chasing a ghost. We're trying to avoid spending our time and our resources going and looking at things that just aren't ever going to happen. And if I just had a nice, polite conversation with somebody on the front end, I could make sure that we were using our resources wisely. So that's the that's the approach that we've taken. Um, if you have questions about this or anything related to project prices and just how these things are moving, you can feel free to reach out to us. You can uh, send an email, uh, you can jump on our website and send us an email at lifestylegroup.com. You can uh, post something on social media and find us on Facebook or Instagram. And we'll help you however we can. And even if it's just with information, that's completely fine. I understand that it's really kind of a confusing world and certain things are available and they're not available and you don't really know what you can do or who you should talk to. We're happy to just help with information so that you stay out of trouble. Because the thing that I don't want to see people do is get into a get into a project where they thought something was going to be one way and it was completely different, a completely different set of expectations. So I'm happy to help however we can. I hope this information's helped you a little bit, at least in terms of how I think about the environment that we're in today and kind of moving forward. Again, I'll just reiterate, I don't think it's getting any cheaper and it's not probably not going to get any shorter time frame. So if you're looking at a project now, go ahead and have those conversations and, and find your right partner and get on somebody's list, even if it's not a project that's going to take place for several months, because honestly, it's probably not going to take place for several months anyway, even in a best case scenario. So um, again, reach out if we can do anything. Thank you very much for joining and look forward to talking to you in a future episode. Thank you. Do you have a home remodeling question? Or would you like to know what the best remodeling plan would be to fit your lifestyle? Submit your questions now at lifestylegroup.com and we may answer them on a future episode. Stay tuned to see what advice the Lifestyle Group has for you on the next episode of the Do You Plan podcast.